Look how gross it is out today. Not as gross as most places, I'll give it that. But there's supposed to be like mountains out there somewhere. Can't see them anywhere. Hey everybody, Thrift Store Hacker back again, coming to you from the inside of my swamp cooler. I just got done cleaning this out because the uh, water reservoir in the bottom there was pretty gross from all the fires. And I'm trying to figure out a way to filter it. Uh, basically, I need this to cool my house. I don't have central AC. The house is 100 years old. And the smoke outside is awful. And on top of that, the dust. Like if you look at the dust, let me zip down. All this dust and ash and smoke that's coming in. And uh, I got to figure out a way to keep that out of the swamp cooler and out of the air inside my house. So I've devised a little idea. Uh, I first just needed to clean this out, give it a good rinsing, empty out the water reservoir, get all the junk out of it. Uh, we also have a lot of calcification from the uh, hard water here, uh, good old desert water. But anyway, let me show you what I'm going to do. First thing, first thing I'm going to do is check, after I've brushed off all the calcification from the water, I'm going to check and I'm going to make sure that water is going down all these inside layers here. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see the water running. You can stick your finger in there and just make sure all of that mat in there is wet. And this setup has three sides. You can see the water running in up here if I zoom in a bit. And you just want to make sure those mats are all getting wet because that's how the swamp cooler works is air comes through here, it gets sucked in through here, and then as the water kind of vaporizes in there, it causes a temperature drop. So you can get about a 20 degree, 25 degree temperature drop inside your home with this type of setup. We'll go around, we'll check every side. Uh, this is actually the tap going off to my watering bucket because we don't have any uh, water spigots out front. Uh, you can check that out in a different video. But it looks like everything's working pretty good, the flow's good, everything's getting wet, the whole mat's getting wet, so we can move on to the next part of the project. Also, you see there's no water leaking outside of the tank. That I guess what I'm going to have to do is set up filters on the outside that suck the air in through the filter and then through the cooling matrix here and then into the house. Let's talk about our filter options here too. I went down to the hardware store and they're kind of cleaned out on furnace filters right now. Uh, everybody's been changing them out, but let's uh, dig into this a little deeper and explain the ratings on the filters. Now I have uh, MERV rating 8 and 11 filter. The 11 filter is definitely going to be better. You can get, I think, a 13 is the highest one we can find. And that would take care of more smog particles and smoke. Now, this is a MERV 8 filter. You can see it does dust and lint and pet dander and pollen, dust mite, debris, mold spores, bacteria. I'm kind of hoping since it filters out some pollen It'll get all the ash out of the air, but uh, we got to go with what we have. The bigger filter is uh, the MERV 11. Does a few more things. It also filters out smoke. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that as my big filter, and then try to get these. I'm going to put these on the side. So hence they're a little bit smaller. And I'll put these on the side. Uh, most of the air draw is going to come through that filter. So we'll just say it's like a MERV nine and a half rating in between the both of them. So let's get these on the uh, swamp cooler. When I install these filters I need to make sure first of all airflow, if you can see that, airflow we're going to be pointing that in towards the machine and then I'm going to use this lip right here to space it out from the uh, side that way because if it's sitting right up on the side, it's probably going to collect some water and moisture just kind of splashing around right there. So that little lip on the edge of the uh, swamp cooler is going to give me just enough gap to keep this dry. And it's going to work all the way around for all the filters. As you can see with the filter here, I have it uh, completely uh, taped up to the side. 
There's no way for air to get in around the filter, so that should work pretty good. Well, now we have our filters on the outside of the uh, swamp cooler. Uh, everything around the outside has been taped up. No air is leaking in around the filters. This is getting a full pull. I uh, have it set on low right now, and it seems to be working pretty good. The filters haven't really hindered much of the uh, much of the airflow. Maybe uh, probably took about you know five or ten percent of the airflow off, but it's cleaner air, so you know you got to give it that. Uh, let's take a look inside and see how it's running inside. Well, it's running pretty good. Air's coming out cold. Doesn't tell the smell too smoky right now, but there you go. So that's a pretty quick and simple way to uh, put a filter on your swamp cooler. That way you can run your swamp cooler and cool your house down when it's 100 degrees out, but not have to take the full effect of that uh, California wildfire smoke. Um, one bonus feature that I did notice is after about an hour of running it, I noticed that it was running a lot cooler than usual. Like, not drastically, but like a, a, a good 5 degrees. And this is why I figure that's happening, is... This is the setup without the filter. This is just your wet mat, and you have the metal grate here, and the air is coming in, and it's not really slowing down all of the air going through that mat, so it's not getting as cooled as it could be getting. So with that filter in the way, the air is coming in, but when it comes in, it's being more evenly distributed, and it's moving a little slower by the time it hits that first filter. And as it's coming into the uh, wet filter to cool the air down, uh, it's since it's moving slowly, it's cooling the air more, and you're actually getting a little more efficiency out of the swamp cooler itself. So that was kind of an added bonus feature that I didn't, I really didn't expect, but hey, I'll take it. Um, I know. That... Well, that's all I have for you today. Until next time, build stuff, have fun, be safe, wear a mask, and don't go outside right now. It's kind of kind of gross and hard to breathe. One more thing really quick, folks. If you uh, like gold, silver, buying, trading, jewelry, coins, uh, there's a really neat channel on YouTube. It's Evan Kale. He's doing a series called Evan Kale is a Pawn Star. And it's easily explained. It's kind of like an antiques road show meets Pawn Stars meets Shark Tank. Um, it, it's pretty interesting because you get a look into the actual gold and silver business without all the stupid drama that you get from the uh, the big network shows. But anyway, give it a watch. You'll probably like it.